My name is Tom. Today I will be using the Sigma 1 Plus software to communicate with a Sigma 2 servo amplifier. And I'm going to scroll down here a little bit and show you the materials for today's project. If you follow the hyperlink, it should take you directly to the web page on the websites where you can pick up user manuals or product information. I'm going to continue scrolling down here a little bit and show you the project description. Yeah, it's pretty much what I already told you, that I will be using the Sigma Win Plus software to communicate to a Yasukawa Sigma 2 servo amplifier. And we'll scroll down here a little bit further and go to my step-by-step -step guide here. And in step one, we'll be opening up the Sigma Win Plus software. And in step two, I will be choosing either online or offline. And in step three here, we'll be preparing for the search. Step 4, we'll be searching for the servo pack. And in step 5, the search will be completed. And in step 6, we will be establishing the connection. So now with that being said, I'm going to go through the video here. Okay, I'm going to get started here now. First thing that I need to do is I need to start up my software. So I am going to come down here to the start button and click on it. Now I could start the software from here, but I'm going to come here to the All Programs and scroll all the way down to the YE Applications folder here and click on it. Now here's my software, and just below that I have a manual file here that I'm going to click on. And what I'd like you to do is just make a mental note of this is where all of the Sigma Win Plus manuals are located. I have a manual here for the indexer, the online manual, Sigma 2, Sigma 5, Sigma 7, and there's several other manuals here. So with that being said, I am going to start up the software here. And that brings me to the connect screen here. Now from here I can choose either the online or the offline mode. And I'm going to stay with the online mode for today. And I'm going to come over here and click on the search button. So now that brings up the search condition settings window. Now in this video, I am going to be communicating with a Sigma 2 amplifier. And that is the only thing that I have checked here. Now there is a Sigma 2 indexer, but I do not have the indexer running today. I only have the Sigma 2. So I want to make sure that that is the only thing that I have checked here. So nothing else is checked, so I'm free to go to the next section. And in the next section, I have four tabs. And the only tab that I am concerned with is the tab that I am going to be using to communicate with my amplifier. And in this case, I am using COM port 4 to communicate to the amplifier. So I am going to use COM 4 tab. And in the COM4 tab, I have a box here with the word search next to it. I want to make sure that there is a check mark here. Because when there is no check mark here, this area here is grayed out. And if I perform a search, the software will not find the servo pack. So we'll check that theory out real quick. As you can see, did not find the servo pack. So I'm going to click OK, go back to search place my check mark here and that brings this field back into an active state. Now I can search for a single access address which I can change here from 0 to FF but I will leave it 0 because my amplifier is set to the factory default settings. I know that the default setting is a address of 0 but I can also choose to select this radio button here which will allow me to search a range of addresses so I would place my starting address here so we'll say uh, starting address of 1 and an address of we'll say 7 and I would leave that the way it is and come down here and press search as you can see it's searching but it did not find the servo pack. So I'm going to click OK and go back. Now 
I could change this to a start address of 0 or I can just go back and just make this a single access address and leave this value at 0 and click search As you can see it reduced the amount of addresses that looked through I did not get an alarm but I do not see my amplifier located under the servo pack or even the motor or in an access number but if you remember I said that I was using COM port 4 so let me click on the tab for COM 4 and there it is so what I need to do is come down here and highlight the servo pack now I could have several servo packs here but today I only have one and I'm going to click on connect and what I will see is another screen pop up and give the indication that it is searching but on my servo pack the display will go to black and it will remain in that state until either the cable is disconnected or I X out of the program so I'm going to click on connect and that opens up the main screen here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the uh, screens here that I've got up and first of all, the, uh, the monitor screens, I can monitor the motion, the status, the inputs and the outputs. If these screens do not come up, you can come up here to the icons and click on one of these icons to pull up the status, the motion, or the input and the output screen. Or you can come up here to monitor and click on it. And come down to monitor again and off to the right here you can see there are the monitor screens here now the next thing I'm going to do is go over the check boxes here and when you place a check in these boxes that activates the monitor for that particular item so right now I have the alarm without a check in the box here so that means that it is not active it is not accumulating data so I'm going to come here and put, place a check mark here and you can see it is now reading the value in the drive along with the speed feedback, the torque reference and the speed reference. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to come up here to the test run up at the top here and click on this and click on jog and that's going to bring me up the jog operation for access number zero here I have the setting for the jog speed I'm going to leave it at 500 but if you want to adjust the speed you can press the edit button here and another screen will pop up and you can place the value in there I believe it's from zero to ten thousand just down below it in the operation section here I have a button that says servo on and what that does is it closes the main contactor inside the amplifier applies power to the motor so if you have a motor that does not have a brake on it you can take and turn the shaft right now just as I'm doing and you can see the values for like the feedback and the rotation angle are changing that means that there is no power applied to it right now so it's not holding it in place so when I press this button here you might hear a click and what that does is it closes the contactor and it applies power to the motor so I'm going to close the contactor now and, and now I have power to the motor in the next section down below that I have a forward and a reverse button which will rotate the motor in the forward or reverse so I'm going to press the forward button and hold it in to jog my motor and you will see that value in a positive rotation now when I let go it will go back to zero and when I press the reverse button here you will see the values are now negative and when I release that they go back to zero so I'm going to remove power to the motor and there's the click and I'm going to X out of this and the next area I want to go to is the parameters here click on that I can edit the parameter I can edit online parameters or I can go to the parameter wizard I'm going to choose the edit parameter here the 
software is reading all the parameters from the amplifier and it is displaying all of them settings inside the amplifier here in the spreadsheet here so what I'll do is I'm going to come down here to the uh, jog speed and I'm going to change that value so I'm going to highlight it and double click and that's going to bring me up the edit function so I'm going to change that value from 500 to 1000 and I'm going to click OK and now the value is green meaning that the value has been changed and it has not been written to the amplifier yet so I'm going to click right here what it's going to do is it's going to quickly write that parameter over to the amplifier now the value is no longer green so I'm going to X out of this and come back here to the test run and go to jog again and acknowledge this and you can see my parameter 304 is presently at 1000 so the parameter was changed successfully I showed you a little bit about the monitor functions but there is so much more to do with this software that it's going to take several videos well that wasn't too bad we're able to gain communications monitor the servo pack the operations and if you like the video or you learned something let me know leave a comment otherwise I'll see you next video